Hi everybody and welcome to uh, video number four <coughs> looking at the changes I've made since uh, sim update 10 in September um, as you know the major changes for us for me were um, the G1000 going to the NXI version so I've uh, reprogrammed the uh, soft keys for the primary flights and uh, main flight displays <coughs> to release a test flight to make sure that those menu systems work I'm pretty happy with the primary flight display but I uh, haven't got to grips yet with the MFD um, haven't used it enough to know where things are so it's not quite habitual yet and the other thing is to look at uh, the VNAV and uh, the vertical navigation system to see how that's working um, can't test everything about it um, I'm going to use the uh, flight plan I usually use for test flights which is on the south coast of England uh, there's London and uh, on the south coast here and but um, going from Shoreham over flying Brighton to the VOR at Seaford and uh, we'll use the radio nav the VOR for this leg and then we'll pick up the GPS and fly on up to Biggin Hill uh, now Biggin Hill I've got a chart for Biggin Hill and uh, it the best we can get is ILS we're not um, authorized to use um, the GPS approach so we're going to use uh, the GPS approach which will take us up uh, from a waypoint up here into Alkin and round and about here it will switch to ILS and we'll do a, an ILS approach using this uh, localizer here and uh, so I'm not an expert on the charts I don't, I'm just getting into the intricacies of them but uh, my guess is that this D1 and this one here are the final decision heights um, your minimums if you can't see the uh, runway at that point you have to go around again and these two figures here this one here is the um, altitude using the uh, current barometric settings and this one here 373 is actually the height above the ground so uh, you will see that later that I'm going to use that 890 later on so uh, what I do is I will move these I've got a second monitor that you're not seeing at the moment so I just put those over onto the second monitor out of the way and let's get into the uh, cockpit so I've got a head tracker on today and I will turn that off in a minute I'm going to freeze that so that you can concentrate firstly on the uh, MFD so let's get that into position and I'll freeze that about there so you haven't got my head wobbling around as I look at uh, charts and things and what I will do is I'll put up uh, a software version of my stream deck so you can see that here and I can actually point to that and uh, tell you what I'm pressing and I've got a camera actually on my X-Touch Mini as usual so you can see what I'm, which buttons I'm pressing to make things happen so the first thing to do uh, we've got everything up and running and engine tests done and everything we <coughs> want to enter our flight plan so I'm going to press the equivalent of this button here, the flight plan, but I'm pressing it here. So layer B, flight plan, and that comes up. And the soft buttons here have changed, so I need to change those as well on my MFD system. So I'm going to go into my new MFD layout. Uh, and these ones, uh, this layout doesn't come up automatically. So I've got a list of pages and I want my flight plan buttons so these buttons here match these buttons here um, but I have to say I'm not going to use them I'm just doing it so I get to know my way around the menu system and check that it works so I need to put in uh, the information here uh, our departure our destination and the Seaford en route VOR so I need to bring up a cursor so pressing the right hand button there brings up the cursor and it looks like I could enter the four uh, character code here but in fact I need to move down to this uh, solid line so using the what is effectively the outer knob here the large knob that rotary here 
uh, to bring that down. Now I can start using the small rotary uh, to enter my um, departure. And you'll notice it starts in the middle of the alphabet rather than have to scroll through the whole alphabet. It's quicker entry that way. So I want echo and then we use this one to move across. Golf. Kilo Alpha is our departure. And that's Shoreham, so I press enter, that's correct. And it's asking me to put a runway in, and I don't actually have to put one in. Uh, you need to put one in if you're going to link up to a standard instrument departure, a SID, but I'm not going to do that for this. But I'll just enter it just so you can see how it works. So I'm going to go from runway to zero, and we press enter, and enter again to accept it. And you can see now that it's entered that it knows where we're going from. Okay, so the on route again, I need to move down to that blank line, and I enter my uh, CFD, SFD VOR. And we press enter there. And it finds us a duplicate, but we can tell it that we want the one for the United Kingdom. And we put that in. Now it's got a data field here. It's worked out how far away it is, and it's uh, on 106 degrees. Um, but it's worked out, it's also asking for some information here, which isn't compulsory to put in. But if I go back to there, what I can do is I can tell it that I want to pass at 8,000 feet. Now, as far as I know, when I uh, enter the file this flight plan back to Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, it doesn't actually take any account of that, and you still get crazy uh, allocations, uh, flight level 120 and things like that uh, in a Cessna, which is ridiculous. Um, so I don't think that works still. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to fly it without air traffic control. I'm flying with real weather uh, but no traffic and I'll fly without ATC because ATC gives you uh, altitudes and it actually uh, gives you the altitudes much earlier than you would get them from the VNAV system. So it gets you down to the altitude much too early. Uh, so I'm going to ignore that, not have that switched on, and just uh, go with the VNAV system and see how that works. So let's put the destination in now. Echo Golf Kilo Bravo we're after. And that's Biggin Hill, so we'll enter that. And again, it's asking us which runway we're intending. Sometimes you don't know that until you get in the vicinity and air traffic control you tell, will tell you. So you can do it while you're flying, but I'm going to force the issue that I'm going to run into uh, runway 21 so I can do my ILS approach in there. So pretty much that's the flight plan sorted. You'll notice that uh, this here isn't active yet. It hasn't got enough information anyway. And, and really it works it out once you're flying. Uh, this is the uh, VNAV profile and it'll work out where you have to start descending from whichever altitude you're at to cross the next waypoint at the altitude that's either you've assigned or has been assigned automatically. And uh, then it works out what your vertical speed uh, needs to be to get you down on a three degree slope. So that's how that works and let's um, Let's put in a procedure. So if I go onto here and press the procedure button and I go to select an approach and obviously I want the ILS 21 approach so we'll enter that and we we'll want to have our transition point actually to be this one here and then we're coming in and matching what's on the chart, coming in this way to Alkin, around here, picking up the ILS around this point here and down. And so we'll enter that. And here it's asking me for the minimums and how we're going to calculate the minimums. So we're going to calculate them from the barometric pressure. And it was 890 feet.
Now, I don't think it actually does anything. It doesn't call out minimums or anything like that. But what it does is it puts a reminder over here on the primary flight display of uh, the 890 feet. And it also uh, puts up here um, some information. That's the uh, crossing point, crossing altitude for my next waypoints after I've departed. So it puts those there. At the moment, that's just a reminder, but we c that will become active and useful later on. I've already checked the ATIS, so I know that uh, that's today's uh, today's pressure. So back to here, I now need to come down and load this. I'm not going to activate it. I'm just going to load that in. And we get a warning saying that this would not approve for a GPS guidance approach. Uh, so it's just for monitoring and that's okay. We'll say yes to that. So there's our full uh, active flight plan. And you can see that it's got the uh, point crossing points already in here for the various fixes you're going to get on the final approach. So they're part of the uh, system here to calculate where descents and things are. Okay, <clears throat> so let's get out of there. We'll press flight plan and get out. And I need to return my buttons on my stream deck back to here. So if I go for pages, main, and then I'm going to go back to my normal cockpit. So I'm going to just go into the hangar again and select the correct aircraft. So I've now got the right layout for here. So that's uh, pretty well done. What I want to do now is to put in the frequencies because I am going to fly off to Seaford. Let's uh, change the range slightly. Seaford first. So I want the uh, frequency for Seaford, which of course I've got on my nav log. I can look it up in my charts. But uh, just to show you what it does here on the um, MFD. If I scroll across here, I want to get waypoint information. So just scrolling across to the get waypoint and then down to VOR and I enter Seaford there. And you can see that it's uh, highlighted the frequency for us. And if I press enter, that will enter that here into the nav one standby. And there it is, that's up there. I could of course have dialed it in using the, the okay, rotaries there. But uh, yeah, it's in. Uh, but it's in standby, so I'm going to switch that now to active by pressing this button here. And the radios have tuned in and it's identified as Seaford because we're close enough, we're in range, so it's found that, that's okay. The other piece of information I would like is from Biggin Hills, so that's airport information. Because I would like the ILS frequency to be available immediately. So, Echo Golf. Kilo Bravo. And you can see we've got the frequencies down here, which I can scroll down to and pick up that frequency and make sure it's entered there. Now it is actually there um, and I'm not sure if that's coincidence because I flew there yesterday on a rehearsal flight or that it's uh, new because I'd already put in uh, that I wanted an ILS uh, approach. But uh, if I wanted to transfer it, I would just press enter and it would be across there. Okay, so that's all set up. And so let's get out of that, we'll go back to map and eventually that will clear itself. That's done. So uh, what I want to do now is to look at what I need to set up on the PFD. So I'm just going to uh, activate my head scanner and freeze it there. So uh, I've already set the uh, barometer, so that's all, that's all done, that's okay. What I want to do is to change the CDI. So I'm going to go into my PFD menu and change this so it's on VOR1 and change the course 
so that it's about 110 degrees uh, it depends on the wind really but 110 somewhere around here that would be uh, a fairly good uh, crossing uh, radial to cross Seaford I don't know which radial we go on particularly we'll still get to Seaford so that's in there and I'm going to change my altitude setting so that it matches the 8000 that I proposed so that uh, gets that set up there now in the PFD options I'm going to change bearing 1 which is this button here uh, bearing 1 so that's reading the Seaford and it gives me the G, uh, the distance to it, the DME uh, of course I've got it into the GPS but I'm sort of doing the what if the GPS fails kind of thing and so let's put in bearing 2 and we'll have that so that it's ready to pick up uh, the nav 2 ILS so that it knows uh, when we're in range on the ILS um, I will change the heading bug while I'm here uh, I'm going to go out on runway 20 so let's set that to 20 I like to do that because then I know that if I'm uh, entering a runway I'm entering in the right direction and I'll use that later on to fly the heading uh, on the autopilot uh, coming out okay so I think we're all set up I might actually I think I'll put um, some wind information in as well and I like option two so that's okay uh, we won't show us any wind data because that's calculated when you're flying looking at your drift and that's how it works out what the wind uh, effect is on your uh, aircraft so it works out the distance difference between the, the actual heading you're flying and the bearing you're trying to fly on and it works it works out the difference between those so i think that's it i think we're done so we can go out of here and back to my cockpit so i've got all my cockpit settings and what I'll do now is we'll just get some lights on and I will taxi to the runway and I will uh, see you there. So I'm going to pause the um, pause the recording for the moment so you don't have to watch me taxiing across the grass and I'll pick you up at the edge of the runway. Okay, so here I am on the sort of entrance, the threshold of uh, runway 20, about to turn onto it. And what I'm going to do before I go is I'm going to arm the G, uh, the autopilot. So I'm going to arm it real for heading mode. And you'll see this come up here saying heading, but the autopilot isn't actually active yet. And I'm also going to arm my flight level control, flight level change. Um, so it's going to. Uh, hold 76 knots which is slightly above uh, the best rate of climb but uh, it seems to work quite well um, but it will hold that uh, airspeed and do its best rate of climb it can at that airspeed uh, once we uh, get the autopilot active that's what it'll do and I'm also going to drop in one notch of flaps one just to help with uh, the lift on takeoff so I think that's everything done. So we'll just uh, adjust the lights. We want a bit more visibility. So landing lights on, strobe lights on. And we'll have some pit hot heat because it's a bit chilly today. And it said it will get cold as we get up to 8,000 feet. So parking brake off. And away we go.
Okay, we're above 500 feet, so I'm going to engage my autopilot now. And retract the flaps. And that should stabilize now at 76 knots. And on the heading bug. Um, this little uh, icon here that's wobbling around, that's showing where your plane is actually flying. You're heading in this direction, but with the wind uh, effect, you, it's heading slightly left. Okay, we're above a thousand feet now, so I'm going to engage my nav so that it picks up the VOR. That should start the turn, so we're going to head off towards Seaford now. And we'll just let that stabilize. There's the shoreline here, and that's Shoreham. And that's the airfield we've just taken off from. Now it's going to um, probably won't pick up the exact magenta line because uh, that's the GPS from exactly where we were parked but it will be pretty close to it and it will certainly be heading in towards Seaford quite happily. But we'll just let this settle, we'll pick up the VOR. And it's turning onto that radial quite happily now. <coughs> Yeah, you can see there's quite a bit of drift from the wind uh, push, that's pushing us to the left so it's steering us slightly to the right to counteract that but uh, that's quite an effect okay let's have a look over here on the MFD uh, we've got a new uh, symbol here this blue arc and that's showing its estimate of where we're going to reach our desired altitude 8,000 feet uh, and that's before well before Seaford so we should be able to cross Seaford quite happily there now this will change as uh, our vertical speed increases or decreases um, but normally uh, now I'd get as I get to about 3,000 feet I would look at the mixture and I would be uh, in the old a system I'll be using the exhaust gas temperature to look for where the maximum temperature is and just uh, have the mixture slightly rich of its peak exhaust gas temperature but there is a, um, a built-in uh, lean assist which doesn't work particularly well with uh, the C172 but I'm going to give it a go and see what it does so if we go into my MFD menu here and into engine management and into lean these are the cylinders and it will look at whichever is the uh, the hottest cylinder and use that for my exhaust gas temperature um, so that's the one I'm looking at here so let's go into the assist mode and what I'm going to do is lean this back and keep an eye on the temperature now it's meant to keep an eye on the temperature as well and work out the highest one that it's seen. It's meant to see the peak and then capture that. So I'm, I'm coming back on my mixture. And you see the temperature rising. It's supposed to capture the peak and then tell you the delta, the change from the peak. So that I can go back to about 10 degrees under the peak. So as I come back on the mixture, that's supposed to capture that peak. And it thinks I'm now five degrees under, so that's okay. But so it's worked, worked better than it has in the past. I'm gonna carry on enriching the mixture at the moment and go past the peak temperature
Now, uh, the problem it's fighting against, of course, is it's warming up, the metal's warming up. And also the peak temperature is going to rise as uh, we're gaining more altitude. So it, it's really probably not best to do it on the climb. That could be where the problem is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of the assist for the moment. So I'm pressing the electron, the uh, Stream Deck version of that and let it um, have another go at working out what the peak temperature is. So the moment it says it's 1600. So perhaps it's captured that now as its peak. So let's enrich it slightly. And I'm a few degrees richer than uh, the peak, which is about right. Uh, it's going to carry on rising, as I said, because we are climbing. But that's pretty well lean. That's not bad, actually. So let's come out of the assist mode and we'll backtrack. And now I'm going to leave that alone for a while. So let's go back into my uh, normal cockpit for the stream deck. And we've got what eight miles to run now to uh, Seaford. And we're certainly going to catch our um, altitude well before that. In fact, let's have a look out the window, see where we are. We're still heading up along the coastline. And that's uh, Brighton Marina there, and there's Brighton Pier, so we're over Brighton. So definitely heading in the right direction. All I do is I'll pause recording again and I'll pick you up uh, probably just after we've uh, reached the 8,000 uh, so that I can uh, get to the VOR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to the heading uh, mode rather than following the VOR and overfly uh, the VOR slightly uh, to show you how it acts when it comes to pick up the uh, the GPS mode when it's not actually on the uh, doing the turn by GPS to GPS. Okay, you're back with us again, and we are what, uh, 2.8 miles from Seaford. That's about uh, one and a half minutes, just reaching our uh, design required altitude. You can see that it's picked up altitude hold mode, and our speed will go up now as we're leveling off. So we need to watch that on the throttle as that stabilizes. So we just reduce the throttle a bit now. And I've got to put this uh, heading bug so that it synchronizes with where we're actually facing at the moment. So I just need to press this button here and that will synchronize that. And I'm going to put it into heading mode. So it's going to ignore the VOR and just fly over Seaford. So we're in uh, heading mode on the autopilot now. And let's just change the range slightly so we can see ourselves going over Seaford. So it's ignoring that turn. Uh, back on the CDI now. So I'm just changing my uh, Stream Deck setting. And on the CDI, I'm going to uh, change this now to GPS. So just pressing CDI until it's ready armed to pick up the GPS. And I'm just going to fly over Seaford. How are we doing? Yes, we're over Seaford now. And I'm going to go about um, two miles past Seaford. And you can see that it's uh, saying if we went for the GPS, it'll be flying to our initial fix point. And it's telling us that we're actually. Um, 1.1, 1.2 miles off track now on the GPS, and so we can see that here. So, on the old setting, if I were the old uh, G1000, if I press nav mode now, it would go into GPS mode and it would have turned and tried to capture that, but this won't do that. Let's go into nav mode here. And it says the GPS is armed, it's ready to go into GPS, but we're still following the heading. And what we need to do actually is to turn and 
intercept that uh, ourselves. So I'm going to use the heading bug, so we're still in heading mode, and turn it round beyond the GPS. And you can see it's turning around now, and that should intercept uh, the magenta line, intercept the, the line that we're after. And when it intercepts it, then it will capture it and put it back into GPS mode. So it's telling us here uh, we are approaching the uh, the track now. We that's reducing. Uh, uh, off track uh, error is down to 2.7, 2.6, so that's getting better. Uh, when we get closer, it will stop giving us these figures and it will start moving this indicator in, and then eventually it will capture the actual GPS. So let's see how we're doing. So we're definitely going to intercept that. Now it's up to you to decide what sort of angle you want to intercept that at, how quickly you want to get back on track. So while we're waiting for that to get in, let's go and have a look at the VNAV system here. So I'm going to go back again into my flight plan mode. And you can see here that it's saying that there's our next waypoint and we want to cross that at uh, 2,300 feet. And we're gonna have to start descending in 10 minutes time approximately. Uh, it's got to take a little while to calculate that because we're not actually on the track at the moment so uh, it's doing its best to calculate that it hasn't calculated a vertical speed for us yet we need to be a little bit closer for that to happen but if we look at the map let's change the range on the map here you'll see that it's marked on here uh, where the top of descent is so it's not going to start descending until we're at that point and that's when it will uh, start if we put it we can either put it manually um, and I'll show you how the indicators work or you can put it in uh, to VNAV mode and that the autopilot will control uh, your descent it won't control the throttle we haven't got an auto throttle here but it will control uh, our angle uh, down so we've got to take control of the throttle when we come to this point here but I'll show you how all that works in a second um, but we're capturing, we're getting closing, closer now to capturing uh, our route on the GPS. You can see that now that has disappeared. And this indicator should start moving in. And then this will flash and then it will pick up GPS mode and turn us on to the heading that we require. So just keeping an eye, that's definitely moving in, that's getting closer. And keep an eye on this indicator here. There we are, it's captured GPS. And it's going to begin the turn any second now to turn us on to that heading. And this is going to start recalculating. So now we're, what, uh, under nine minutes away from uh, the top of descent. Uh, so again, I'm going to pause uh, this control, uh, this recording, and pick up when we're closer to uh, starting the descent, because nothing's going to happen. We're going to tootle along at around 100 knots. There's the turn happening. Okay, so I'll pause that and pick you up later. Okay, we're back with you again. Uh, we're about uh, two minutes from the top of the descent. You can see us getting close to the top of the descent. So a couple of things we need to do to prepare for that. Firstly, uh, that's going to become the height that the uh, autopilot is going to aim for. But it, this takes priority. Well, in fact, whichever one's the highest takes priority. Um, so at the moment, if I ask it to descend, it won't descend below 8,000 feet because uh, it's seeing that as the priority. So I need to take the altitude down. I'm going to take it down uh, so it matches the 2,300. If you had an AC, ATC height, uh, that's where you'd enter that. And now the next thing to do is to actually arm the uh, vertical navigation. So it's that 
button here. Now I've tried to program that into here and I'll see if that works now. If I press the V now and that doesn't work. So my programming hasn't worked. So I'm going to have to use the soft key here. And you see that now it's saying that V path, the vertical path is armed but we haven't reached the top of descent yet, so it's not going to go. We've got 50 seconds to go before it reaches that point there, and it should uh, then change the uh, symbol here. It's telling us that the V path is armed, and this is uh, like the glide slope. If you follow an ILS uh, down, that's the glide slope, and we're underneath that slope at the moment, so it's going to capture that as if we're following a, an, an ILS approach. But it, it's virtual; it's all calculated by the GPS, and this is its intended uh, vertical speed. So that should line up in the centre once it starts the descent. So we're getting close to capturing that, and this will descend. Here we are; we're now in V path. We're going to start descending, so we need to manually control the throttle to make sure we don't overspeed. So we can drop that back. And we've got a trend line here to say we're going to get slightly faster, slightly slower. So that's about stable now. It's about as stable as we're going to get on a gusty day like today. Um, so we're still going to be traveling about 110. I'd like to pull it back a tiny bit on the throttle. 110 knots airspeed, somewhere around there. And it's achieving 650 feet per minute down. And it's calculated here about 680. So it'll adjust this automatically and keep us in, in the bounds so that we'll uh, reach the bottom descent. Uh, and you can see on here, that's where it thinks the bottom of descent is going to be. In fact, if you look very, very closely, you can see BOD. It wants us at the bottom of descent by that waypoint there. And we'll achieve it probably just beforehand, in fact, at this rate of descent. So that's beginning to a 3% a three degree descent. And you can see it's constantly updating the calculation and constantly updating this to keep us here. And it tells us actually here that we're, what, one, two foot, bang on, how far above or below uh, the uh, desired um, path that we are on. So again, I'm going to pause this recording now. Uh, nothing much is going to happen until we get towards the bottom of our descent. Okay, we're um, getting towards the bottom of our descent now. In fact, if you look here, it says here, uh, just under two minutes from the bottom of descent and just over two minutes away from the waypoint. So the two are going to coincide uh, fairly soon. What I want to do now is to uh, make this, that's the um, ILS for Biggin Hill. I'm going to make that the active on uh, the nav radio. So we just swap that over and give that time to identify. Oops, swap the wrong one. Let's go back. Nav one, swap that over. There we go. So we're now uh, on the, it's fixed up the ILS for Biggin Hill. It knows where that localizer is. And we're still on the V path, but we're getting closer and closer to our desired uh, altitude. And it says we'll be there in, well, one minute, 10 seconds, and one minute, 15 seconds to get to the next turn point. It will probably turn before that because it's going to uh, smooth that curve uh, around because it's quite a tight turn from here to Alkin. So it'll smooth that down. It's uh, just, bring the range in a little bit so you can see how it smooths that curve out so we need to be ready with the throttle as this levels out so that we can pick that up and probably adjust the mixture may even go to full rich fairly soon because we're going to be coming in on the approach path pretty soon uh, got to keep an eye on the altitude uh, I don't know if I discovered a bug in the system or something I'm doing wrong with it, but uh, a couple of times it's continued descending. It hasn't actually picked up the altitude hold mode properly. So you can see it turning and leveling, and it says it's in altitude hold mode. That's armed, and it should capture that and go steady. 
but I've noticed that uh, occasionally this doesn't hold steady and continues to descend. And you can see it descending. So you should have a held at that point there. So I'm going to arm the altitude hold mode manually to stop it descending. It knows that the next waypoint is 1800, but it should have taken that command there and, and done a hold. It's still in VPath mode, so I'm now going to adjust the desired altitude. And if you look here, that it says that the top of the descent should be about here to start descending so that it crosses that waypoint. It hasn't got to go down very far. But uh, it was st definitely still descending. But it's holding the altitude that I captured it at when I'd spotted that problem. So I don't know if it's uh, me or the system that's doing something wrong, uh, but it's picking up here that it wants to uh, start, it's calculating the V-path, um, and there is the indicator saying that's what we're going to need to fly. So we'll see if it picks up automatically. Um, I've tried to do this a couple of times, and in fact it uh, picks up the ILS system about here before it actually enters this, but we'll see what it does. And it's calculated uh, a 500 uh, feet per minute once it gets to that top of descent. So we'll see what happens with it. And it says it's on the V path. And it starts in the descent. And it should start the turn pretty soon as well. And it's telling us it's got four seconds till the turn. There's the turn happening. And that should establish us on the localizer fairly soon. It should pick that up. And there's the localizer picked up. So now I'm going to put it into approach mode so that it will pick up the actual glide slope from the localizer. And you can see it's looking here for the GS. the glide slope and the glide slope indicator is appearing here and it's holding us at 1800 quite happily but it's still using the v-path so I'm going to leave that and see if that glide slope comes in and does that pick that up automatically and put us into uh, approach mode? And I can see the runways ahead of us there. So on localizer and it's definitely turning us off of uh, the V path now and it's picking up the glide slope and that should start the descent 
So we have to get back on the throttle and we'll slow ourselves down a bit now. Bleed some speed off and put up the mixture to rich, full rich. and put in the first notch of flaps and it increased the throttle to hold that now I can see there's quite a bit of uh, wind drift going on here that uh, we're heading this direction and flying in that direction so there's uh, a good 10 degrees of drift going on here but I'm still in autopilot and we're about 1200 feet above so I'm going to go to full flaps now Now we still haven't reached the minimums yet, so um, much lower than you'd expect, isn't it? But I'm going to drop the autopilot out now, and I've got it down for the last few feet. Okay, oh, I was quite pleased with that landing actually, a little wobbly to start with but stabilised it, um, so I'll leave that in, I won't edit that one out, nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, um, obviously I'm going to uh, taxi off to find some parking now, but I haven't got ATC to help me, um, so won't bother with that for you. Uh, so it works quite well, just that one little glitch that happens, seems to be consistently there now. Um, that uh, after the first uh, descent it carried on descending and I had to uh, put it into altitude hold mode and then it picked, I didn't press anything else again after that it just picked it up automatically and carried on with the path and then it did switch to ILS automatically 
so I didn't have to touch anything there. Uh, you do have to make sure that your ILS frequency is the active one. I experimented with that the other night and just let it run itself down. And even though the frequency was in on Nav 2 and was standby here, it didn't flip it over, which I thought it might do. I thought it might flip it automatically, but it didn't, and it just carried on descending. Um, so I'm going to have a, obviously have another uh, couple of goes. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I haven't seen that symbol before. I know what it means. It's, uh, we're now not picking up any glide slope, so there's no glide slope uh, information for it. But that's it. We're, we've uh, done the entire trip, and everything seems to work. I said I didn't really actually use this very much, apart from the engine lean, which I could have done from the exhaust gas temperature anyway. So uh, question how much you actually need to put the effort into uh, creating all those menu systems. But uh, it's there. Okay. Oh, there's an alert here, and uh, I didn't show you the alert. The alert that's there is just saying that you can't use uh, a VNAV. It's not supported for the final parts of the flight plan. So as you know, we can't land using GPS. So it warns you that there. Uh, so uh, that's it. That's the system. If anybody knows about that uh, little bug or my error in uh, using the VNAV system. I'll be interested to know if you've got a solution for that to uh, see if we can sort that out. Okay, so um, won't be another video for me for a while. Uh, we've got some family business that uh, we need to get on with for a couple of weeks. So I'll come back to it later and I'll look at how this G1000 NXI works in a couple of other aircraft as well. Make sure that transfer works okay. So the Diamond next generation and then I'm going to start looking at uh, the Robin aircraft and I'll explain why in a later video why I've chosen that one. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.